This is Barbara Brown. Will Rogers Garden and Arboretum in Oklahoma City and joining me today is Alan Storjahan, manager of the Botanical Gardens Division for the Oklahoma City Parks and Recreation. Alan, there's so many wonderful changes taking place here at Will Rogers. Uh, it's really rejuvenated. Could you tell us about some of the projects that have been going on? Well, thank you, Kim. Glad to have you here. It's a beautiful day and Will Absolutely. Rogers Park, the gardens and Arboretum really have been in the midst of quite a bit of new improvements and things that are going to make it even better for people as they come and enjoy the garden as the years go by. Absolutely. I notice uh, the pond here that we're standing beside uh, is looking fantastic and this is one of the big projects you've been working with. It is. Uh, we renovated both ponds here on either side of the Rose Garden, mm -hmm. completely dredged them and put new walls and new spillways and so it's a, it really has enhanced the whole garden. So folks, when they come here, they'll see something different. They may not know what it is, but they'll notice a big difference. And mm -hmm. the street here that goes along the garden was also repaved. The parking lot's repaved, all new lighting out there. So it really has brightened up the whole park And uh, in addition to the gardens and arboretum. And one of the goals that you've been talking about is to make the gardens more accessible to the public. And some of these changes help with that. We have, and we have seen a lot of folks using Will Rogers Park mm -hmm. Gardens and Arboretum, and we expect that to increase in the future. We're very happy to announce that we've received a grant from the Oklahoma City Community Foundation and a renaming of the Arboretum to the Margaret Annis Boys Arboretum. And we'll use those funds to make the Arboretum even more accessible and people can go out and enjoy the trees and shrubs that they find there and learn a lot about plants that do great right here in central Oklahoma. It's always nice to have a shady place to go and walk around in the summer here in Oklahoma. Absolutely, it gets a little <laughs> hot here at times, but here at Will Rogers Park Gardens, there are a lot of plants that people can come and see and mm -hmm. learn about and uh, they can also participate in programming which you'll hear a little bit more here in a, in a few minutes but the programming here at the garden is quite extensive a lot of things happening mm -hmm. and uh, more things going on in the future absolutely so another one of those future projects is the renovation in the conservatory as well it is the ed lichen conservatory is a wonderful uh, conservatory. It's been in Oklahoma City since the 20s mm -hmm. and been moved several times, but here at Will Rogers Park Gardens it has reached the stage where it really needs some work. So this next summer we're going to completely renovate it, rebuild it, and open it once again to the public. It's going to be really awesome, a great place for different kinds of events and exhibits and all sorts of garden club uses and things like that. Excellent. Well, there have also been some changes taking place in the gardens themselves, and we're going to go and talk to Lewis about some of those changes. Absolutely. Lewis will tell you how everything is done here at the garden. Joining me now is Lewis Scott. Lewis, can you tell us about your role here at Will Rogers? Well, Kim, thanks for having me today. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. My name is Lewis Scott and I am the naturalist here at Will Rogers Gardens mm -hmm. at Will Rogers Park. Mm -hmm. And part of my role here is to not only manage the exterior 32 acres that we have, mm -hmm. but also the garden exhibition building okay. as well. Excellent. And there's quite a number of gardens that you are managing out here. and We're standing in one of those, the Rose Garden. Can you tell right. us a little bit about this garden, this space? Uh, yes, this is uh, the Charles E. Sparks Rose Garden. Mm -hmm. It's about an acre and a half, and it is an AARS trial garden. Mm -hmm. And we do receive new introductions every year that are under trial. And we also display uh, a lot of introduced varieties that have been on the market for quite some time as well. And being a trial garden is a great way to find out what's working here in Oklahoma. Exactly. As you know, with Oklahoma gardening, things can be a little tricky. <laughs> and it's always nice to have a little ace up your sleeve so that you can figure out, hmm, I wonder really how well this might do for me here. And I, you've been telling me that you're taking a little bit different approach to how you manage the roses here. Would you like to share some of that? Yes, what we're really looking at is trying to increase the awareness of sustainability, mm -hmm. but also at the same time to make sure that even casual non-gardeners have a very nice colorful floral display. 
So what we've been looking at is rethinking about some of our traditional horticulture practices mm -hmm. and how we can put a little bit different spin on that through varietal selection, uh, increasing the uh, length of bloom period, mm -hmm. etc. Okay, and also maybe trying some different pruning that might be a Different little... pruning techniques. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we also are very, very careful about, again, traditional horticultural practices, something as simple as fertilizing. Mm -hmm. You know, we really try to make sure that what we're doing makes sense. Excellent. In addition to the rose garden, there's several other display gardens, and some of these you work with uh, volunteers and plant societies here in Oklahoma. Correct. We have several horticulture display gardens here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a hosta area that we work with in conjunction with the Oklahoma Hosta Society. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a daylily area, Hemercalis, with the Hemercalis Society, and then also an iris area with the Oklahoma Iris Society. Very nice. It's nice for them to have a place to come and gather uh, and also display uh, their passion, the flowers that they're Exactly. And, about. you know, it's, it's kind of a nice service to the public because, again, each of these groups have their own horticultural interest. And it's very nice that they have a place to come and try to get the public enthused about that mm -hmm. as well. And that kind of relates to some of your recent goals. You've been changing the focus here at Will Rogers, trying to serve the public more. Would you like to share some of the goals that you've been... What we've really been focusing on, Kim, is to try to do an active outreach even to people who are not necessarily gardeners, non-gardeners if you are, or casual lay gardeners, because we really feel like there's an important need for that. Again, when you start looking at some of the current issues with the environment and sustainability and those sorts of things, it's really nice to be able to pull people in and present them with ideas and methods that they can consider to be successful at that, and again, in a way that makes sense for everyone. And so we're addressing both the uh, avid gardener, but also those who are new to it. Exactly, because we have some really interesting specimens in displays here. And I, I think there's something for everyone. As you said, people who are keenly interested in gardening, big hortic horticulture fans, they'll find something interesting mm -hmm. here. And then also just people who want to stroll around with the family or kids and take a couple of colorful photographs, they can have those needs met as well. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful service to the public. Thanks. You mentioned there's a lot of plant societies that are active out here. I know you also hold weddings. Uh, it's a very multi-use facility and you have a lot of programming. Would you like to share some of that programming with us? Uh, sure, Kim. One of our goals here is to provide an educational outreach mm -hmm. and programming outreach to the citizens of the Oklahoma City metropolitan area. So we're heavily involved in everything from uh, horticulture oriented classes. Mm -hmm. We even do horticulture oriented activities. For example, we have a twice monthly freehand drawing class that features horticulture materials okay. that students can come and participate in. Mm -hmm. We also feature a once a month, very casual flower arranging course okay. as a preparatory experience to people who want to maybe pursue a floral design class. Very nice. You've mentioned that the uh, Audubon Society is active out here. Photography so is really used by many different groups. That's correct. We have about 45 regular monthly user groups. Uh, about half of those are horticulture societies and organizations. Mm -hmm. And the other half are primarily uh, very uh, intense hobby groups. Mm -hmm. Metro Camera Society, Corvette Club, those sorts of groups. Excellent. Well, there nice. are many wonderful opportunities for the public out here in the gardens. are certainly un undergoing some exciting changes. Thank you very much for sharing it with us Thank today. you so much for having us.